Um, I do think the Ravens will win, but yeah, I do see a backdoor cover happening. The Texans aren't going to get blown out. Um, they're going to put up a fight. Underdog mentality. CJ Stroud knows what's at hand, but their season is already a success. Um, even if they take an L in this game, it's still they should just clap their hands. Just how incredible their season has been, just being one of the laughing stocks of the NFL last year to just having a franchise quarterback that could just change their organization. The Nico Ryan's doing a great job. So um, if they're going to go down, they're going to go down screaming. They're not going to make the same mistakes week one that they are going to do now. Um, Noah Brown is not playing, but I just see that Nico Collins, Robert Woods, John Mechie, I believe that there will be a solid just core. Dawn Schultz, I think those will be enough weapons to kind of keep the Texans in the game, but Lamar is just going to do Lamar things and just how dominant they were throughout the regular season, how dominant they've been at home, and then just the embarrassment that they just put on the 49ers not too long ago in primetime. That team is a force. So um, Ravens win, but give me the Texans 9.5. All right, on to the big game for me personally. Um, Packers versus San Francisco. San Francisco, what a season they've had. I mean, just Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Brock Purdy. That offense is just clicking. Great defense. You have now they have you no know, Chase Young with Nick Bosa, Fred Werner. That great defense. Kyle Shanahan is a great coach. Um 49ers have just owned the Packers, especially in when it comes to playoff time. Um, I believe I saw a stat that the 49ers in the last 10 games against the Packers are just seven and three. Kyle Shanahan and Matt LaFleur, they know each other really well, especially from their time from the Washington days. Um, very similar offensive schemes that they have. Um, I do believe that the Packers can go blow for blow offensively. 49ers have their weapons. Packers have their weapons. But this is Jordan Love. 49ers tend to own the Packers when Aaron's when Aaron's there, Jordan Love can do something that Aaron has not achieved, which is just take down the Niners and just kind of just steam through and just embarrass Kyle Shanahan. I don't think they're going to embarrass Kyle Shanahan, but this is just Jordan Love. I mean, past nine games, 21 touchdowns, one interception. I mean, Jordan Love. If you ask me, I think he may have been a top three quarterback second half of the season, and Jordan Love has solidified himself as a top quarterback in the NFL. He is a top quarterback in the NFL. Um, the thing about this Packers team is deep down they know the whole world's against them. They didn't they don't think that the world is giving them a chance to beat the Niners. They believe in one another. They are creating history. Jordan Love, first year quarter, first year as a starter quarterback, he's doing something that Rodgers and Favre hasn't done, which is win a game in their first year starting for the Green Bay Packers. Um, yeah, this is going to be a game. Um, I did see that the Lions were at plus 10. I am confident that the Packers can keep it within 10. I think the Niners might squeak this out. I am not blowing past an upset. This this is going to be a very intriguing game. I think for the Packers to upset the 49ers, they have to play a great game defensively. Niners have a lot of weapons. You have to stop C-Mac. Stop the receivers. Kittle, Brock is just, he's a good quarterback. Green Bay needs to put up a fight defensively. If they can win the turnover battle and the offense can take care of the ball, get Aaron Jones going again. I mean, he's been a top five back the past four weeks. He's He's been a top five back the past four weeks. And with Aaron Jones just rolling and rolling and running the ball, that is 
helping Jordan Love spread the ball around and just find spots in the zones and man-to-man coverage. I feel like the only way that the Packers can upset the Niners, get Jones going again, have Love play a clean game. Doesn't have to be a perfect passer rating, but a clean game, just multiple touchdowns or interceptions. The defense needs to turn the ball over. Can they do that against the Niners? That will be a tough task. This might be a biased pick because I am a Packers fan. I don't think we'll go out and get blown out. We put up a good fight against the Cowboys. Every Niners player figured that the Cowboys would just clean sweep the Packers so they could face the Cowboys. If I am the Niners, you can't take this game lightly. They're a great team. The Niners are a great team, but you can't take this Packers team lightly. They're young, hungry. They don't know better. Inexperienced, nothing to lose like the Texans. Season's already in success. Packers have nothing to lose. Um, And I won't be surprised if Matt LaFleur has a couple of trick plays up his sleeve. I won't be surprised if it's fourth and short on the Niners side. Go for it think the Packers can put up a fight as well it's going to come down to can the defense perform that the way that they've been performing the past few weeks that's the big question especially with how many weapons the Niners have but if you ask me what I think my pick is I am taking Packers plus 10 against the Niners I think the Packers keep this close They would have to play a really clean game and turn the ball over for an upset. That would be a tough task. But the Niners, I give them like, they have a good chance. They they can win this game. Niners can win this game. But they would just have to just not walk into the stadium and think it's a W like that the Cowboys. The Cowboys just showed up and thought W was going their way. The Niners can't do that. Um, If the Niners just do Niner things, just keep the offense clicking. Defense just shuts down love in the offense. The Niners can easily just win this game and just go to the next round, the championship game. But if you ask me right now, I like the fight that the Packers are doing. I love love of how he just he just looks like a franchise quarterback. You see Roger similarities. I think Lafleur knows what to look for, um, and especially with Love being a backup to Aaron. This isn't his first preparation for the Niners, so I feel like if the team could believe in one another and Love can just scheme, if Love LaFleur can just scheme his way, there is a chance Texans beat the Browns, Packers beat the Cowboys. It's the playoffs. The records are 0-0. What happened in the regular season got you to this point, and what happened in the regular season doesn't matter. It's the playoff time, do or die, but I'll take the Packers plus 10. Next game, Sunday, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Detroit Lions. This is going to be an intriguing game. Um, Detroit is at home. Bucks are on the road. The line is plus six. I took the Buccaneers plus six. I know you see a trend right now. I've taken three straight underdogs. I don't think... The first three that we're mentioning right now will be blowout, blowout, blowout games. But I took the Buccaneers plus six. Reason being, the Lions love to get Montgomery and Gibbs involved in the run game. After what we saw, Buccaneers against the Eagles, the Buccaneers have a have a good rush defense. They blitzed Hurts and made him uncomfortable. And the key to success against the Lions is if you can stop the run game and make Goff uncomfortable and Goff is just inaccurate throughout the game, there's a chance of an upset. There is a chance of an upset. I mean, the Lions don't have the greatest pass defense. Um, Baker's been playing well, especially when you have receivers like Godwin, Evans, Aten, Trey Palmer, I think Mayfield can have himself a game against his line's um, pass defense. It's going to come down to can their line stop Hutchinson to be disruptive. disruptive. This will be a close game. Um, 
it's going to come down to who's going to be better at controlling the clock, who's going to make the other team pump more, who's going to control their opportunities and seize it. Um, good chance that the Lions win, but I I think the Bucks keep it within six. They've been a great road dog this season. I know kind of, you know, trends and models kind of go out the door once it's playoff time because it's do or dies at the regular season. But the Buccaneers have performed well away as an underdog. And they go to Detroit. I feel like to at least keep up with Detroit or beat them, kind of have to just sling it a little bit. Um, as you saw with the Seahawks game against the Lions early in the season, just Geno was just slinging the rock and then just kind of have to outscore the Lions. This might be a low-scoring game. Just, you know, this might be something where the Lions can't get the run game going. The Buccaneers might have some trouble offensively because the Lions just play with a lot of heart and Dan Campbell just have this team just want to run through a wall. Might be a low-scoring game. But if the Buccaneers need to beat the Lions, they kind of just need to just be careful with the ball and just kind of dice up their pass defense a little bit. But give me the Buccaneers plus six. Now the last game, the Bills versus Kansas City. And boy, this is a good conference matchup. Um, The Bills beat the Chiefs first time around. And that was a big statement game. The line right now is two and a half favoring the Bills. I've stayed away. I haven't made a pick in this game just yet. If it gets to three, maybe Chiefs. I just need to see where the market is testing this game. Um, The Bills are humming. Josh Allen has been playing like an MVP the second half of the season. The fact that they've had pretty much no shot to get in and Allen's been playing just lights out to get them in the playoffs. Allen's just been an incredible quarterback. And then on the Chiefs side, I mean, yes, the Chiefs had trouble during the regular season. The most drops I believe they had out of all teams offensively. But when it comes to just playoff experience, the Chiefs have the most experience between the Bills and Mahomes and Reed and know what they have to do. In terms of preparation, it kind of comes down to can the team just catch the ball when the lights are bright in Buffalo to make it to the championship game. I'm a bit iffy, but if you were to ask me right now, I will probably take the Bills minus two and a half. I think this is a game where Allen is going to control the clock. I think James Cook may have himself a game. Gabe Davis was out last game. He'll be in this game. So I think it'll be Diggs, Gabe, Don Kincaid. So I believe, you know, this offense will be at full attack and healthy against this Chiefs defense, free pass defense. But, you know... Allen's a dual threat. If no one's open, he's going to get you a first down. And same thing with Mahomes. I mean, if no one's open, the receivers are locked down. Mahomes is going to get you a first down. Um, The Chiefs will not go down without a fight. But I just think, you know, Bill's at home. They're clicking. They're getting hot at the right time. The Chiefs took that game at home against a Miami team that just got frozen in just negative degree weather. And Tua it just isn't a good quarterback. The team alone wasn't a good team at all, but they're going up against a good team right now and the Bills who have a chance to make it to the championship game. The Chiefs keep us close, but I do see that the Bills make big stops. I have a feeling that the Chiefs might drop the ball when it, it's crunch time, and I think this is something where just the Bills are going to seize the opportunity, probably win the turnover batter, battle, and then just control it from there. And then hopefully they might find their way into the championship game. We don't know, but my pick right now is Buffalo minus two and a half. So there you have it for the wild card roundup recap. Um, my betting lines and my picks for this upcoming weekend 
Um, if the alliance were to shift maybe around Friday and Saturday, I might do another video of why they are shifting and what if my picks still remain the same or not. But yeah, that is it for the recap. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Be on the lookout for more videos and hope to see you guys soon. Thank you.